and welcome to another evening of Frank Conversation here on Hard Copy, coming to you from our studios in Abuja. I'm Maokbe Ogun Yusuf. Now, over the last three editions of Hard Copy, we have focused on education. First, taking up the Taraba State Governor on his plans for primary and secondary schools. Then, speaking with the Vice Chancellor of the University of Meiduguri, who discloses the challenges of running a university in a security-challenged area. Then, with the Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Maman, on some of the challenges brought forward by the Vice-Chancellor. If you missed any of these episodes, please go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash channels web, or channelstv.com forward slash programs forward slash hard copy to catch up. Tonight, we turn our attention to the economy. No, not monetary policy or foreign exchange, but some challenges in specific sectors that seem to undermine whatever it is government might be doing to prevent sabotage in the real sector. On the 21st of February, the Foundation for Investigative Journalism, FIJ, released an investigative media report titled Undercover as a Smuggler. In the report, investigative journalist Fisaya Shoyombo details how he was able to smuggle in a hundred bags of rice with the help of smugglers who worked with some corrupt officials of the Nigeria Customs Service who allegedly take bribes from smugglers and then betray patrol teams by updating smugglers on their colleagues' itinerary. Now, as if this investigation wasn't damning enough, on the 28th of February, FIJ released another report, this time accusing the hierarchy of the Nigeria Customs Service of smuggling in motorcycles used by terrorists and had drugs into the country. While the FIJ was doing this, Premium Times, another online media platform with an investigative arm, released an exclusive report titled Top Nigeria Customs Officers Enmeshed in Multi-Billion Naira Corruption Scandal. In it, they reported that at least 40 senior officials of the Nigeria Customs Service have been indicted in a robust investigation by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, who investigated proceeds of bribes paid to customs officials by smugglers importing and exporting contraband goods through Nigerian borders. At some point, they even said they found 12 billion naira in the account of seven senior customs officials. All of these investigations are putting a big question mark on the efforts the Nigeria Customs Service is making to protect the Nigerian economy from smugglers and saboteurs and encourage production of goods and services within the country's borders. On Hard Copy tonight, I speak with investigative journalist and editor-in-chief of the Foundation for Investigative Journalism, Fisaya Shoyombo, who joins us from Seoul in South Korea. I ask him not only about the findings of his investigation, but what has piqued his interest in this line of investigation. Thank you. Before I answer your, your, your question, let me quickly say that um, I noticed you used the word allegedly. And um, everything I'm going to tell you on this program, none of it is an allegation because I was an active participant in this story. So I'll be telling you the things that I saw, basically, not exactly the things that people told me, you know. So how did I get into it? It was about, you know, different complaints that I'd you know, had, had got over, over a number of months about the scourge of smuggling in that axis, you know, and whenever I put out a story and I sign it off with my name and I call it an investigation, I participated in it. So I thought, let me try to, to, to smuggle, you know, some items, some items into the country in bulk and then see if it's possible. So there are two major talking points so far from that story. What I said happened with customs in terms of how they take bribes and let people smuggle things into the country. And then my mentioning of uh, Ibrahim Yegumbo Dende, you know, as, as, a, as a smuggler. Those are the two talking points. But Dende was not even supposed to be part of the story. It was simply about customs, you know, and then in the process, I found out 
um, more than I, bar I, I bargained for, as they say. So can you tell us a bit more? Because I noticed that this um, has now gone on. You started sometime in 2022. This investigation <laughs> seems to have taken a period of about two years. Uh, you, you did Fantastic. one by motorcycle, and then you said you tried to go back again to see, to, to do one, you know, with, with a vehicle, that's a, a car. But it would seem that one was more successful than the other. So I'm 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 happy you asked that question. Mm -hmm. um, so I went in November 2022. You know, went into Benin Republic, got the bags of rice, um, brought them into um, a, a a place called Ojaodo, and then from Ojaodo, I was supposed to move them to Ilaro, but we had to bribe customs. So what happened was I went in, like I wanted to smuggle, and then I had to get smugglers already based in Ilaro and Ojaodo to take me in as part of them. Meaning that everything I wrote that the smugglers told me, the smugglers were not speaking to a journalist. The smugglers believed that they were speaking to a smuggler like them. And that's what, so the, when, when people say, oh, it, it, it's hearsay, it's not hearsay. No, it's, it, it's just like going undercover to join a robbery gang. And then, you know, because you are one of them, they tell you, oh, and, and the IDP or the police commissioner is part of them. It's not, you can't treat that kind of information with scant regard. So we were waiting for customs to tell us the day to move the bags of rice from Ojaodon to Ilaro. And while waiting, I had to leave the country. I had a trip planned, so I traveled, you know. So there was a wait time because the customs official who took money from the lead smuggler had not yet given us the all clear. So what happens is if you hear, if you read it in any newspaper, customs intercept um, one million bags of rice. Um, those are people that did not bribe them. Those are people that did not bribe them. Anyone, and I say this with all conviction because I spent weeks in three spells to get this story. Anyone can bring in anything into Nigeria if you pay the right people. If you read any news that customs seized whatever, those are people that try to outsmart customs. If you bribe the right people in customs, you bring anything in. And when I say anything, I mean rice, I mean chicken, I mean turkey, I mean arms, I mean ammunition, I mean guns, I mean tramadol, I mean bus motorcycles used by terrorists in the north. These are all things that were brought in. The Nigerian customs cannot deny. They arrested IBD Dendi in the second half year for gun running. They know why they picked him. Let them come out and tell us. The previous time they arrested him, they confirmed they arrested him, but they never told us what he smuggled. So how come you can tell us you seized 100 bags of rice, but you arrest someone and you can't tell us what he smuggled? And the custom, the then custom spokesman confirmed it. So yes, I did it in spells because each time we couldn't move it in on our own. Nobody, try, if you try that, you run the risk of getting killed. As I wrote in that story, one of the smugglers that I worked with directly, his friend was killed because we were trying to move stuff into, through the forest, bypassing customs, not paying bribes to customs. You know, his friend who thought he had, he had charm, he was fortified, got shot by customs and he died. Mm -hmm. You know, this particular smuggler, you know, jumped into the bush, he broke his leg, it took him time to heal. So, mm -hmm. you know, you know, pe people have to understand that when they consume the media and it's there that customs assist whatever, cocaine, codeine, whatever, those guys did not pay them. If you pay them, you bring it in. Besides, these are very, very heavy allegations because what it would mean... I, I'm making what, what it would them. Mean, I, what, I can make them. Yeah, well, what, you, what it I'm, means... I'm making them. ...is that yeah. the entirety of... It would seem that they are no good eggs. That's what it would mean. Because initially, the impression I, I got what, when you uh, published the report and I read it was that you, so it would seem that smugglers... Some smugglers are terrified of customs. I mean, you cannot just carry the goods across because in some instances there were heloxes on patrol. In other words, there were still people who were doing their jobs, but that there were people within the system 
who were corrupt, who were willing to take money and tell these people where their colleagues were and as such betraying the entire efforts of the Nigerian custom system. That's the impression I got. Uh, not that we, the entire system itself is degenerate, but you seem to think otherwise. So both statements are correct. The entire system is degenerate in that the, 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 the good eggs are few and then they cannot deliver when they are being betrayed all the time. If you pick a patrol, a customs patrol van, you know, Hilux is a is street lingo among smugglers. Say Hilux is coming, Hilux is coming, you know that's customs. If you pick the customs patrol van and you go to the street, and smugglers already know you are coming, what can you do? You know, there is nothing you can do. As I said, the only guys who get caught are the ones that have not bribed anyone such that the patrol team can be sabotaged. Well, I do also know that in the period of this investigation, I mean, which you also have admitted, took a while for, you know, many reasons. Um, the hierarchy of the of custom service has also seen a, a shakeup of, of some sort. Uh, we've seen a new CG appointed to the helm. Has there been any change in modus operandi? Nothing has changed. The new CG knows everything that is happening. You know, the biggest smuggler in the Southwest is friends with the new CG. There's a relationship. Um, is friends with the president. He was on the president's train to the climate summit in Dubai. He's friends with a number of governors. He's politically connected. So everyone who has the constitutional power to stop smuggling in Nigeria is aware of the depth of the problem, of the people behind it, and benefits directly or indirectly. I am making these statements. I know they are grave statements, and I'm saying them with certainty, simply because I went in, I embedded with them, I spent time with them, and I know that it is impossible for that scale of movement of goods, of items. I saw trailers for that I, import, I imported uh, small goods on that bags of rice. I saw trailers moving stuff unchecked and they are labeled headquarters movements. Nobody could stop them. You can't, you can't put a customs officer on the road and then the custom officer is not free to stop movements of trailers coming from outside the country can only happen because, as they say in, in Nigerian um, parlance, it's order from above. Well, I, I have been, as I also pointed out, there were two reports released almost back to back within the month of February alone. And it does appear now from this um, ongoing investigation which you you say you you said you came across uh with one of the i'm trying to remember his name now um ibd i think you called him in your investigation yeah, IBD, it, didn't it? yeah it does appear that quite a lot more is going to be coming out but i i want to focus on the first two reports which you released now the first one i i saw that um you undertook it you you went to i mean you went to Ilaro and all these other places around Ogun State. You, exactly. You embedded and, you know, you had visuals and all of that. But the, the subsequent one uh, in which you accused the Nigeria Customs Service of smuggling motorcycles used by terrorists. And, and these are grievous allegations when the Customs Service itself is the one, <laughs> you say, smuggling these motorcycles on behalf of terrorists, not just for commercial motorcyclists, because we know that it's still a major source of transportation for many people across the country, but specifically for terrorists. And you also say they import hard drugs um, into the country. You seem to have relied more on sources uh, than, an, than an actual investigation. What would you say is responsible for the differences in connecting the investigative dots? 
So for every single undercover investigation I have done, I have happened on sources who were willing to volunteer more information, um, sometimes with proof, when not with proof, with a promise to show up if necessary in court, if anyone says there's a lawsuit. So the source I quoted in that story is not an ordinary source. <laughs> Look, no source can tell you that zone A, all movement of goods in zone A have been narrowed down only to order order. No ordinary source can give you that terminology. No ordinary source can know the contents of goods being moved into the country. No ordinary source can know the destination of motorcycles. Welcome back. You're watching Hard Copy coming to you from our studios in Abuja. We're speaking with Fisaya Shoyombo, who's the editor in chief of the Foundation for Investigative Journalism, FIJ, and has released a series of reports detailing widespread corruption within the Nigeria Customs Service. Now, you said, and correctly, yeah, uh, motorcycles are means of transport. You know, when you bring in motorcycles into this country and they are destined for the north, you are creating problems. When you bring in Tramadol, and it is destined for the north. You are creating problems. When you smuggle in arms and ammunition in the second quarter of 2022, and we had a presidential election in the first quarter of 2023, you are creating problems. Now, if the Nigerian customs arrests you for gun running and you are freed, it means that there are people who are powerful who benefit from it? The Inspector General of Police is from this region, it's from Yewa. This smuggler is from Yewa. The IGP, if he does not know what is happening, where he's from, then he's not fit to the IGP if he doesn't know. But he knows. You, you probably will, during this show, play a video of Dende threatening to kill a custom officer who, for whatever reason, stopped his... Um, vehicle containing rice stopped it from entering the country. And it was openly boasting. I have called Wale. That's the CGC. I have called Ejibunu. That's the controller of operations in Zone A. That's the most powerful controller in the Southwest. I've called Ejibunu. I've told Ejibunu to call Wale. And, you know, the confidence, the language. You have Customs officials, gun-wielding customs officials, not like they were not armed, they were armed, begging him, pleading him. You know, these are things you see that show you how bad the situation is, how terrible. We are sitting on a keg of gunpowder in this country. Our insecurity issues are nowhere close to getting resolved. Because if you move in arms and ammunition, last get into the country and you get away with it, They've disappeared into the country. They are ending up in the arms of people who have no respect for the sanctity of life, and some damage will be done with it. Mm. it so it's a big problem. Mm -hmm. it, it is indeed a very big problem. But I don't know whether you see... I was going to ask you first about, you know, what the reaction of the Customs Service has been to this, because I know that as a, as a journalist, you would have reached out to them. Uh, we'll come to that shortly. But I, what I want to know is whether covering this and also seeing that in, within the same week in which you released your report, that Premium Times also released an equally damning report, but b this time based on an ongoing EFCC investigation into the Nigerian Customs Service and the accounts of some senior officials in Nigerian Customs Service. So does it give you any hope that something is being done and that there is, you know, help on the horizon to try to sanitize whatever is going on within the Nigeria Customs Service? It doesn't give me any hope, and I'll tell you why. Now, I'm not quite sure of the connections of the Northern um, Expose by Premium Times to 
the powers that be. I don't know that connection. It's true, you know. So Premium Times got the documents, you know, the contact from EFCC in the north. I got the legwork in the southwest. So the things I wrote in the exclusive, you know, about you know, um, getting IBD, then they getting money from from other smugglers, remitting them to the customs hierarchy in Abuja. It's the same template now that Premium Times uncovered in the north, because all the guys that were found with cash, it's proceeds of smuggling. Now, but the reason it still doesn't give me any hope is that the president of the country knows this guy, and nothing has been done. The IGP knows him. The CGC, Comptroller General of Customs, knows him. These are three people in their own right, each of them acting independent of the other, has the power to stop the mess in the Southwest. And it hasn't been done until that happens. Let's invite EFCC to look into smuggling, into customs in the Southwest, investigate the major customs officials in that region, link their accounts to the headquarters, and let's see what they will produce. Any effort that has not led to the wiping off of the perpetrators of smuggling in its dangerous economic and security form does not encourage me. You know, it's not about telling me that or telling the public that you you have traced funds to people. No, these are the people in charge of smuggling and you've taken them out. As I said, the Controller General of Customs is aware, but he still has his job. The IGP is aware he still has his job. Nothing has changed. You know, so all that money staying in the north and nothing has happened to the Controller General of Customs. You think billions of Naira can exchange hands and then the head of an agency claims not to be aware? Mm. I don't think so. Well, I don't know what the reaction... Can you tell us what the reaction of the Nigeria Customs Service has been to your report? Before I went to press, I reached out to the spokesman, my wada, texted him three days in a row. He didn't answer. When I finally called him, he told me that, yes, he saw my messages, but I was asking to speak with the controller general. It's not like I was asking to speak with him. So I had used the wrong medium. You know, it degenerated into an argument, and I said, look, you can't, he was quite condescending in his approach. You can't speak to me condescendingly because I'm giving you the opportunity to respond. I cannot force you to respond. I only have to show that I reached out to you. It's your choice if you want to respond or not. You know, and he kept on insisting I'd use the wrong medium. Okay, so tell me the right medium. Do you want an email? Do you want, I'm out of the country, so I can't make a cellular call. What medium do you want? And he ended the call angrily. So. So what would so you yeah, have? They, what, they, what, what would you have the people do? Because a, a lot of people are reading and they're very concerned. They're, you know, also looking to the customs for some answers uh, or for answers. They're looking to the government of the day to say, you know, what will be your reaction. But really, what can people do? What what should the people of Nigeria be demanding of their government and the Nigeria Customs Service? Number one, I'll start from journalists. Lots of newspapers published the rebuttal by IBD Dende, you know, against you know against me, against FID, against Arise TV, against whatever, without as much as sent one person to Ilaru to go and ask, please, who are the smugglers in this town? If you ask 20 people in Ilaru, 19 will tell you the same name. If you go to other so as, as media, why are you giving a voice to someone claiming to be whom he is not? That's, you know, on the part of the media. Then as people, it's not enough to read online and that's the end. Ask questions. 
If you want to protest to the Office of Customs, protest. Billions, dozens, you know, billions of naira can't be traced to people and nobody is forcing the agency to respond. The CDC did not get to his office the following day and meet a crowd of 1,000 Nigerians saying, you must explain to us what is going on. So if Nigerians are not going to you know, take action beyond speaking on social media, then people like Customs will sit somewhere and say, you don't have to respond to them. Give them three days, five days, one week. It will blow over. They'll be distracted by another headline. And then life continues. It's too easy the way um, those who are filtering away our commonwealth, it's just too easy how they get away with it. Officer, we certainly will be keeping tabs with you. We have to thank you for your brave work on this investigation. And thank you for coming on Hard Copy. Thank you as well for having me. Have a good evening. Well, that's the program tonight. But before we go, we reached out to the Nigeria Customs Service and got through to their public relations officer, Mr. Abdullahi Mewada, who differentiated between the FIJ and Premium Times report. For the FIJ report, the spokesperson said they needed evidence to substantiate the allegations, but said there were in-house investigations going on into the allegations detailed by the EFCC as reported by Premium Times, and they will brief the public when these investigations are concluded. And as Fisaya mentioned, IBD Dende has taken out disclaimers in some newspapers, although some of them who published online have started to take them down as well. We are also trying to reach Mr. Dende. Well, for more on the investigation spoken about here tonight, please see the following links to get more on the work done by these brave journalists. Thank you for watching. We'll be looking forward to your feedback as well. I'm Mark Welgun Yusuf. Good night.